Hi, this is Paul from GlobalTradingSoftware.com and today's video is about support and resistance zones. So when you're day trading futures, I want to go down a little bit into detail on um, where to do them, not to go too back. Don't rely on software to do this. This is your eye that's very, very important. Uh, you need to understand what's gone off. Uh, so right now I'm coming up to midday European time. So the USA just getting up, having a bit of breakfast, some coffee. They need to understand what went off yesterday, if they're day trading futures, what went off yesterday, what went off overnight, and what's going to help them into today's trading session. So I've picked RTY purely because in our first sort of beta test of our live trade room yesterday, I picked out a trade on the one minute, a scalping time frame. So I'm just going to go down to that now. We're just going to, I'm not going to talk through the trade because that's in the recording. Uh, but what I wanted to do is, so just talk about yesterday really in that um, we had Mike for the first uh, couple of hours of the session here, this, this sort of area here. Uh, and then I just came on and we're just going to let, this RTY trade, uh, the, the chart run on the one minute and basically talked about if this happens, good looking trade, probably. So at that time, I identified some overnight support and resistance. And this was just after the market opened as well. So this sort of support and resistance zone was something because at that time, the price action was down here. And basically, I, you know, we've had some lows again. We've been touching this zone down here uh, during that pre-market and the overnight session, and then we had these lows uh, after the session opened. So that that sort of framed our chart for the day, if you like. Uh, we then started to move up. We had the divergence cloud, and my, basically I said, look, if we push up through this resistance zone and we get a five or a six star buy on the expert algo. Uh, this would be a good entry here. Uh, we then came back up to, to test. We came down to test this previous resistance of support and then we moved on and that was an $1,100 trade. Later on in the day, I put this uh, zone on as well to help us any further trades. And then obviously I just put that top out zone for those highs of that session. So uh, as the day progressed, I, I put on more zones. Um, if we just look at that on the five minute, which is gonna help us a little easier. Uh, to identify so those are the zones for yesterday so when i'm waking up and having my coffee this morning uh, in the, in a, if i was in the us i'd be looking at what's happened overnight there's a nice double bottom here okay triple bottom that is going to have some sort of say on our trading today okay without a doubt because that's happened during the european morning so the you know there's there's been data during that European morning, which really found support there and went on. We've got this uh, overnight highs here, sorry. Um, we've got initial Asian highs here. Uh, you know, where do they come into play with yesterday's high? That's pretty close, isn't it? Okay. So we've got something here that's going to really, you've got yesterday's highs just at the top of this uh, zone here. And yesterday's highs is always a point of resistance. You've got these uh, sort of Asian session highs here. And then if we just transcribe that backwards, that's got to come into effect today. OK. Also, yesterday's lows, that zone is very, very important. OK. We need to have this zone on today for us. So whether we're trading on the 5, the 12, the 1 minute, whatever, these are really important zones. Now, this zone here from yesterday, uh, it's not been tested again right now, but I'm going to leave it on my chart. And this big zone yesterday that we pushed through and took that trade, remember, uh, it, that's not been tested again right now as well. So I've got it in mind. It's on my chart. I could always bring that through. And then I can change the color and I can just let little, you know, just make that a little softer in there just to be, uh, you know, to be aware of that sort of level. So now we've, we've basically set up the chart for RTY uh, for the upcoming pre-market session, which is always good. We've got a look on our calendar. What's coming up today? Uh, we've got housing starts at 1430. 
uh, which is an hour before the market's open because this is European time. Uh, building permits, building permit numbers, that sort of thing. So we have got some data now before the markets which could move these indexes. So if we're going to trade that pre-market session, we need to be understanding where um, where our overnight supports were, which is here, where sort of yesterday's highs were, and it was tested on this zone as well uh, overnight in the Asian session. So this this is a big, it's a big fat zone, but you don't want to be going long into that. Um, trouble okay and you don't want to be going short into support um, again I've put this one on lighter from yesterday because if we do break this and we get um, a bit of a run uh, you know it could quite easily break through this and test yesterday's lows so I'm really just framing the chart ready for today's session now if I hadn't have been outside I would have seen this five and six star uh, sell here on the five minute and thought you know there's some fresh air here and one of the things I'd be looking at is okay we've got um, this the five star here was good the stock would be just over um, the top of the EMA cloud uh, for that signal candle here the entry would be just one tick below there okay now this is the thing even if you're in the US session I'm just going to change that to red for danger a second you've got to look at risk to reward here risk to reward to the next support is one to one is that an acceptable risk factor for you to take this short trade okay if it is to this support uh, and you are aggressive with your trade management you know if it hits this support and finds uh, finds a bit of trouble here and starts to move back up you can get out and make a little bit of money for me I prefer a 1 to 1 1.6 so I wouldn't have taken this trade and that's just me personally because I know there's plenty more trades plenty more trading days uh, and I just need to have my great risk reward in there but again these are the things that you're looking for these are the things to help you find remember one of the biggest statements that I make is as a trader as a professional trader you should be looking for reasons not to trade and in this case here I've got good reasons to trade with the five and the six star sell I've got the divergence cloud confirmation but I've got overnight support here and my, that makes my risk to reward one to one that is my personal reason not to take this trade so one of the biggest things to help you in those decisions because the final thing that you do when you set up a trade is looking at that risk to reward and for me it's got to be over 1 to 1 1.6 or, or there or thereabouts for me I know I call it fresh air that's what's got to happen uh, so hopefully this has helped it's a quick video um, but you know it's not rocket science what happened yesterday what happened overnight how's that going to affect my trade today what data is coming out today i've got to be ready for that data as well because there could be a reaction so that's just rty you would be doing the same sort of thing on um the s p es uh, if you trade spy or the q the qqqs or the, the you know nasdaq you'd be doing the same part of your ritual every day is framing the chart what happened yesterday what happened overnight How's that going to affect today? And then you're ready to go. Don't worry about all of these daily zones and everything like that. Your day trading futures, the data points that will move the markets today, <clears throat> really won't be affected by those daily zones. Okay. Um, what happened yesterday could affect it, especially the yesterday's highs and lows. Uh, and then the overnight highs and, and lows are really going to uh, probably help you as well. Uh, but don't don't overthink this. What happened yesterday? I keep repeating this because this should be in your mind. What happened yesterday? What happened overnight? Is there any correlation? Is there any sort of strong support and resistance zones I need to put on my chart so I'm ready to go for this day? And then look at that economic calendar. What's going to happen? Uh, what what's the time is going to happen uh, you get a signal uh, just before that uh, you know there's, there's lots of things going in your mind but you framed your chart you're ready to go the support resistance zones are on you've got not gone too mad 
and this is what your RTY chart should look like today whether you're trading the 12 minute, the 5 minute, the 3 minute, the 2 minute, the 1 minute, the 15 minute, the 30 minute. These are the zones that are good for you. I've used the 5 minute to help me do that and these are obvious bottoms here. These are obvious tops, uh, obvious bottoms. So that helps us out and as the day progresses, if there are support and resistance zones that formed, especially that correlate with yesterday's or overnight's, draw them on your chart. Hopefully that helps guys. Speak to you all really soon.